Hi, this is Professor Fernandez. We're working on class notes A in lesson 17. Um, this class notes is meant to get you used to, uh, get you comfortable with finding equilibrium solutions of systems of first order uh, ordinary differential equations. So I call these SN FODES. So uh, let's look at the definition up here. So it says, consider this SN FODE. A vector x sub zero is called an equilibrium solution if this. Right. So one thing I, I point out here below in this paragraph is what is this condition really uh, telling us? Well, it's saying that if I substitute this vector into the right hand side of the system, I get the zero vector. OK, so that's kind of telling you how to find this equilibrium solutions. Right. So we set the right hand side equal to zero, the zero vector. And then we try to figure out what vector makes that true and that's the equilibrium solution and i talk in here about why we call this an equilibrium solution because you know removing the clutter here if this is true if x sub zero is an equilibrium solution then the right hand side of the system is zero for that specific vector okay and if the derivative with respect to time of anything is zero then that something is constant in time. So that is kind of what you would expect with the word equilibrium, meaning that the system is not changing, right? So no matter how long you wait, the system does not move anywhere. So that kind of explains it, the, the, um, the nomenclature here for equilibrium. Okay, so let's go down here and find the equilibrium solutions for this system. So what do we do? So um, thinking again about what equilibrium solutions are, we're looking for, um, in this case, x and y values for which the right-hand side is zero. And it has to be zero simultaneously, okay? Um, because if you go back to the definition, the entire vector, the entire right-hand side, has to be the zero vector. Not just the first component, not just the second component, right? Um, so in other words, x equals 1, you might think, oh, maybe that's part of the equilibrium solutions. But the problem there is that at x equals 1, dx dt equals 0. Great. But dy dt, look up here, is not equal to 0. Right? At x equals 1, I have a 2 here times y plus 1. So it might be equal to 0, depending on the y value, but in general, it's not. So I can't really analyze, or I should say I shouldn't analyze equilibrium, find equilibrium solutions that way. So I'm going to show you an easier way. Um, so here's the first thing that we want to be 0, x minus 1, y minus 1. Here is the second thing that we want to be 0, um, x plus 1 and y plus 1. Okay, so this one gives the two possibilities, x equals 1 and y equals 1. This one gives the possibilities x equals negative 1 and y equals negative 1. And now we're just going to consider the four possibilities that are here. So I'm going to start um, with the sort of uh, obvious one. So what if x is 1 and y is 1? So let's consider that, call that possibility A. Um, is this point an equilibrium solution? I mentioned up here that these are also called equilibrium points, right? We can just keep track in this case of the x and y value um, and also think of it as a vector, right? So we're thinking here of, of also this vector, 1, 1, or this point, same, same idea. Um, anyway, so is 1, 1 a uh, legitimate, I should say, you know, correct equilibrium solution? Well, so let's think about it. So... Um, this combination of x and y definitely makes this zero. So we satisfy the dxct being zero. However, if I look at, at, at what makes what x and y combinations make this zero, this one does not satisfy. So um, this is not an equilibrium solution, right? It does not make both of the right hand, I should say all of the right hand sides equal to zero. So let's try this one down here. Same problem. So we're trying negative one, negative one. Okay, that makes number two, um, that makes number two zero. That's how we got it, so great. But it, it does not make number one zero. Um, so that also is not an equilibrium solution. All right, so we're gonna keep going, trying to figure out one, find one that is, so no. So what do we do now? So my suggestion now is gonna go, to go diagonal. 
Um, so what about this pairing? All right, how about x equals one, y equals negative one? Um, well, so x equals one definitely makes this zero, great. Um, and y equals negative one actually makes this zero, great. So yes, so that's an equilibrium solution, right? At that um, vector or point, same, same thing, we have both x dot and y dot equal to zero up there. Okay, so I did that by, by going through this diagonal. Let me now consider going through this diagonal. So how about um, negative one and one, right? Does that work as an equilibrium solution? Um, well, so uh, if x is negative one, then this is zero, great. And if y is one, then this is zero, great. So there we go. That is another equilibrium solution. Both x dot and y dot are zero at that point. And you can convince yourself that there's, there are no other equilibrium solutions. I can't select these two because I can't have two different x values, right? One is not equal to negative one. Um, I also can't select these two. I can't have two different y values. One is not equal to negative one. Um, so these are the only two equilibrium solutions that the system has. Okay, so to recap this method that I'm proposing that you use, um, set x dot equal to zero, set y dot equal to zero, and then however many other variables there are. Um, one of the practice problems has a dz dt. So you'll have three equations. You have a third equation here of something equals to zero. And then solve each one of these equations for the x and y values that result. It might get complicated. You might get an equation like y equals x. Um, but then the point is to solve or consider all of these um, combinations that could result uh, as I did over here, okay? And that's gonna yield for you all of the equilibrium solutions. And you can always guess and check like we were doing here by actually substituting in these values into the right-hand sides of the system and making sure that they are all, all, all of the right-hand sides are zero at the points that you think are the equilibrium points.